Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Civil channel. Today, we're building the high grade Cosmic Era, the Sword Impulse Gundam. This is the third impulse that I built. I built the fourth impulse before, and then I built a blast impulse before at the very early stage on my channel, if you remember. And, uh, you know, this time I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna start unboxing this straight because, you know, Premium Banda doesn't have anything at the side for me to introduce. So when we open it, we'll see uh, one package, two, three, four, five, seven packages, seven packages and an instruction book. Yeah, I am running out of things to complain because every time I wish they have a like a new instruction book for the premium Bandai, but at the but uh, they never give us any. So shame. And uh, okay, that's not the point. Okay, so let's just quickly flick through it. So we, as we can see, new torso for the freedom to uh, regenerate the um, the scene in the anime. And you know, we got some instruction manual, the backpack, and uh, you know, sorting. And basically, that's it. Very bland. So I mean, it took me a while to open up all the runners, and now we're just looking at it. This is the new runner, the G Run Runner. As you can see, we can see some uh, boomerangs. Uh, uh, effect part and we can see the new torso for the freedom and with the uh, you know the gigantic sword uh, part to put it in yeah and then we can see that gigantic sword part at the side here this is the B1 runner this is the inner frame and a and the guns and the shield and some you know some like joints some thrusters as well a1 runner, the outside, uh, the outside armor, the core fighter, the head, the shield, expander one, and the didn't expand the one, and uh, you know some waist pair, some arms, and some legs here. The C1 and C uh, at the C1 runner, uh, I believe it's the for the torso, the the uh, you know the knees armor, the the shoulder as well. This is a D1 runner, I believe it's for the backpack. It is. It is it. I don't. I don't really sure. Oh wait. Actually, this is for the shield. This is. And we got two clear uh, uh, action base stand. I assume it's for the core fighters. We got an F1 runner uh, uh, for the torso, for the shield, and for the head as well. We got a C2 runner. Uh, it's for the. I believe is the torso and. Yeah, I believe it's for the torso. We got the H runner, new runner on this uh, gunpla. It's for the backpack. A two runner, outside armor, as I just said for the legs and for you know some uh, side skirt as well, but mainly for the legs. B two runner, exactly like the B one is just a some outside add some inner frame. A D two runner, which is uh, the legs, and I believe it's the waist. The feet and the head. A F2 runner for the eyes. G2 runner, the new runner in the uh, in the gunpla, you know, for the backpack, for the sword, and for the uh, you know boomerang effect and the sword effects. As usual, body caps and a very large stickers. I am starting to questioning about the the accuracy of this mobile suit. So you know, I will see you at the review and we'll find it out.
Hello, welcome back to the review of the Sword in Post Gundam. So this is the finishing of it. I honestly need to say I am a bit disappointed on the model itself. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. Uh, I like Impulse. This is actually the first time I built Impulse. I actually kind of didn't even need to look at the instruction book to you know get the parts together except the backpack. But um, <clears throat> what is the most disappointing on me is uh, the lack of laziness that uh, Bandai uh, put into this gunpla uh, first. Uh, the amount of stickers being used on this gunpla is... I'm sorry, but that's terrible. Like, a lot of parts... A lot of parts don't even need stickers. And, I mean, at the backpack. A lot of parts don't even need stickers. You, like, you could just give us a separate part, but I don't get how Bandai thinks that uh, putting a uh, large and loose sticker on it will do well. Uh, Bandai logic. I don't really understand why, but, you know, here we are. Uh, and actually I finished it and you know if you bought this you know you you can, you also came for the uh, effect part on the uh, Freedom Gundam vs uh, Force Impulse effect part for the uh, torso and then uh, the gigantic sword is sliced through it uh, I will talk about that later because I found that was in other problem as well but you know uh, let, you know let's just turn around for you to look at it the overall the overall uh, mobile, uh, the gunpla uh, have a different is a uh, slimmer like the revive and the backpack itself is redesigned if you build a really old and crappy uh old hg gundam series uh, so important you know the the boomerang here is very small and i don't think they give you an effect part for it but and the sword is really loose as well but this time i think they actually fixing the uh, connecting problem and you know i'm happy about it it's just the amount of stickers just Made me kind of pissed off. Well, yeah. Anyway, uh, I will start the review now. As usual, we'll start from the head. So, uh, head move up, move down, totally no problem. But you know, moving 360 is kind of difficult because uh, it's it's slightly difficult to turn around. So I would just say 90 degrees. That's it. And you know, this time the head wasn't so uh, the cut wasn't so colorful because it's uh, mainly as the dark gray color theme is not like the other two imports which is green and I think it's red so this time the head didn't look as attractive I guess all right now let's talk about the hands this uh, I mean the arms and uh, now so 360 uh, is possible but just don't bump into the swords at the back and you know bend all the way up the bending is very good 180 very good and um, but you know but you know now 
is a very problem that I uh, never mind. And uh, you know the hands can go around as well. The arms, the arms this time uh, tighten up. So this time it's pretty tight. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know though. But you know when I rotate it around, it's it, uh, the feeling is pretty tight. But the other two impulse that go was very sloppy. I am not sure why. But <laughs> you know, and the hands can lift up pretty high as well. So you know, accuracy for the model is pretty good. And yep, I need to. I was about to talk that problem later. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the waist. So as you can see, I, I when I was introducing the arm, it fell off. So you know, major problem for the for the impulse is, uh, you know, because it's a because here's the thing, the connector piece is not like deep enough. So when you plug on it, it was still going to fall out because it's not deep enough, and you know, uh. Well, it does gain you something good. Uh, you know, it can move front, back, and move to the side as well, pretty good. And the movement at the side as well, side skirt, pretty good. And, you know, front skirt, movable as well. But, you know, the waist is the part that I don't like about the impulse. It's very easy to fail out. And, you know, when you're posing around or, you know, you're just making it like slightly bending to the back and the whole thing is going to fall off. This is the part that I don't like about this model, is the waist part. Before I introduce the leg, quick reminder, please don't mess around with this model too much because a lot of part on the model is actually very sloppy and, you know, it's not going to stand well. So, you know, legs can bend up very good on a very good angle. The, the feet can move all the way back up and it can even bend. Move to the side, uh, moving to the side as well. The lower leg armor can be moving as well. So let's do a little test, uh, you know, side kick, uh, 50. 50 degrees, front kick, no problem at all, back kick, don't even think about it. <laughs> you know, it's an XG, so of course it's not supporting for the back, uh, the you know, the back kick. And you know, uh, the thrusters here can do a slight adjustment. And may I just remind you one more time, please don't play around with this more, uh, impulse, uh, any kind of impulse, don't play with it too much because you know, the legs are very sloppy, so eventually it's gonna break or it's gonna lose itself uh, for the joint. So please don't play with it too much. Welcome now to the brand new part of our model kit, the backpack. And now uh, this is the part that I have to complain the most because I literally was about to say for a revived version and for a premium Bandai. Uh, is kind of disappointing me for the color separation like black part and the black part and the blue part here on the sword is actually by stickers in the, and it's not an individual part so which makes me kind of disappointing because uh, you know those part you could you could have just given a new part and Bandai designed to show their laziness to not give us a new part I am running out of things to to you know complain about it but you know uh, fine but you know the stickers, for now it looks good, but once you're messing around with it like a couple times, it will eventually, you know, lose itself. Uh, may I remind you that, uh, I don't know why, but it seems like all the impulses couldn't stand on its own. Last time I got the force impulse and the blast impulse, they all can't stand on its own. So, of course, the sword impulse couldn't stand on its own. As you, as you know that when I was doing the review that with, uh, a couple minutes ago, and then it started falling off. So, you know, I'm just quickly introduced, but you know, if you want to use the sword as the standing support, I'm really happy about that, you know, uh, the connector at the back, so the sword could move around very easily, and the, actually, they actually made the boomerang a very good uh, design, they actually can flip now, yay, very good, right? They could actually flip now, but you know, be, be careful, don't flip too much, they will eventually pop down, so... Don't flip too much. And now I'm gonna moving on to the accessories. Just like all the impulses, you can have two kind of shoes to choose. You can choose the expanded one or the closed one. But of course, I'm used to the closed one already, so let's just stick with it. And you know, we all we also have a beam rival here. Two parts with the sticker, the red part here, and the uh, scope here is by stickers. And you know, as usual, the gun and the sword can be separately placed on the gun plot itself. So you know, I'm just going to quickly show you that. And as for usual, the gun, you know, can have a separate joint here, so you can put it at the back waist, like this. Very easy, right? And you know, if you turn around, at the side of the uh, arms, there's a connector here that you can put on the shield as well. 
Done. And this time for the sword imports, they give us two action bases. I don't know why, maybe it's for you to post the uh, uh, episode 34 scene. But you know, I'm happy with it. And they actually give you a special connector on the action base, so really good job about that. Let's put that away. And as for the usual, they'll give you a core fighter unpainted or gray. So you know, you have fun to you have fun to re repaint it. I'm not gonna paint it. And as usual, two connected pieces here for you to transform into the core fighting. Uh, you know the, I think, transform it back to the you know the playing mode. I don't really remember. It's the core fighter mode, but. This time, the instruction manual didn't show you how to do it. So if you have a force impulse, you can grab that instruction manual out. And you know, if you want to turn it into the uh, separate separate uh, core fighter form, then you know you can do it. And as usual, you know, uh, the backpack itself can okay, put onto the uh, core fighter. So you know, you know, all you have to do is just just do a simple, you know, a couple simple steps. You turn around the sword, and then you flip the back. Thrusters and then you put all the boomerangs on the, the different kind of different side Like this and now all you have to do, you know, you just plug it back on. There you go Very easy the next thing is the mold is actually the main thing that new into the kit and actually a lot of people buying this for is to recreate the anime scene in the episode 34 is it uh, yeah 34 so the force beam for the force impulse took sword uh, took the sword backpack and pull out the sword and then slice it through um, the freedom and here is the effect. But personally, I don't really like it because you know all the colors, all the different colors on here is actually by stickers. So which is very easy to lose. I just don't get it. Why if you want uh, if you want to give us a effect part, why can't you just give us a complete one? And instead, you molded everything to white, and you can either repaint it or you can just put on these ugly stickers. Like, look at it; it's already start losing down here. And good job, Bandai, for giving us a unpainted torso. So extra work for us, you know. Good job. And I personally think this thing actually not quite attractive, since it requires a lot of working and you know recoloring you know it's good for you to make some you know poses and you know recreate uh, or you making stop motions or making poses before me i don't really think this thing actually necessary to have in this kit all right now let's talk about the last thing in the kit is the you know the beam effect part so this time they give us a boomerang effect part yay and it actually looked pretty large too i'm not sure is that is that scale it right but you know it looks large it looks cool i'm happy about that next this time when you put on the sword effect it's gonna be a bit annoying it's actually not a bit annoying it's very annoying actually uh you know you have to actually rip off the sword and turn it and then turn it into and then you have to use the effect part to you know put it on and then you slice the and then you slice the effect part back on I mean this white part here back on like this actually this time they fixed the connecting problem you know as you can see it's pretty stable too I like it and you know you can hold it two hands now finally it's actually a double sword connector actually works this time it's not like the old version the old version like loot uh, like when you're holding on the gunpoint I think uh, it take like two seconds before it fell off and then you have to rejoin it again, fell off, rejoin it again, it's really annoying. But this time they actually did a good job on making the sword stable. So this is the end of the review of the Sword in Post Gundam. Uh, I honestly having a lot of complaining about the kit because, you know, it uses too much stickers. And, you know, uh, quick FYI, if you're doing this double sword post like me, uh, the other hand will be holding on the sticker side. And it will eventually cause sticker loose, so don't mess with it too much. And... And I'm really disappointing on the waist part as well. You know, I, I've been saying that since I was reviewing the blast impulse, I already disappointed to the waist problem. It's really easy to pop out like So when I was trying to pose like this and then it probably pop out about two or three times just to I was just trying to get it right. But I guess that not necessarily need to anymore. So I guess this gunplay was suitable to, you know, just pick a pose, 
put it in your shelf and then leave it there. It's not suitable for messing around or poses with too much because eventually it will kind of lose joint and break. So, well, I guess that's how it is. And, you know, the the design looks cool. It's just a couple problems on the, on the, on the joints kind of ruined the feeling and I'm very and the stickers I already run out of words to complain because you know that's how Bandai is laziness well anyway this is the end of the review hope you guys like it and please drop a like down on my videos and subscribe to my channel as well and I will see you next time goodbye